Thank you for watching MMA Odds Breaker. I'm Frank Trigg. Of course, that is Ed Suarez, the patriarch now for so many of the champs that are at the UFC. Um, first, before we get into RFA, which is what I really want to talk to you about, I haven't talked to you since Anderson's loss. And really, I mean, we've all gone through losses before. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, how much more motivated is he now for the part two with Chris Weidman? Well, I think he's very motivated. I think he's mo motivated to go back out there and um, and redeem himself. Has he said anything to you personally uh, about changing up training camp or doing something different in training camp? Um, no, I don't think there's anything that he's going to change about his camp. I, I don't think it wasn't anything that he wasn't prepared. I think I think he he made a mistake, and and I think that. Uh, um, you know, I've heard him say it many times before that in, in, in a fight, there's always a magic moment in the fight where where things can happen. And what happened was, is that Chris, you know, went after Anderson at the right moment, right when he made a mistake. And that was the magic moment. And uh, and Chris capitalized on it. And Anderson has capitalized it so on it so many times with his opponents. And uh, this time it happened to him. Do you think that Anderson will ever fight either GSP or John Jones? I, I'm pretty sure he has a desire to fight everybody because that's just Anderson's personality. He'll fight anybody the UFC throws in front of him. But do you think he'll start hunting it down and searching for these super fights that the fans want to see? Um, I'm not too sure, man. I, 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 I don't know what he'll want to do. I, I just know right now what he's, his main focus is, is on Chris Weidman. I, I mean, um, only God knows, and a crystal. If I had a crystal ball, I could tell you. But uh, you know, right now, I think his main focus is just getting through this next fight on December twenty eighth. All right, let's talk about some up and coming stars you guys have in Black House. Who's the next? Not necessarily the next Anderson Silva. Who's the next big star that we haven't seen yet that's coming out, or that we don't really know that much about yet? It's coming out of Black House. Well, I mean, you know, over the past year, I think the biggest. You know, the, the the couple guys that have really started to, you know, gain some momentum is obviously Glover Teixeira, um, who's who's right there knocking on the, you know, he's going to be fighting John Jones for the title. And I think another one that, that it's a guy that's been around for a while, but he's really on a run is Rafael Dos Anjos. Um, right. the, those the, those are guys that um, that are currently in the UFC that I think are are you know you know and also it's real uh, exciting to see what's going to be happening with Lyoto. You know Lyoto is dropping down to 185 pounds. He's going to make his uh, middleweight debut next week. Yeah. So um, you know fighting against Mark Munoz in Manchester. So I think there's a lot of exciting things as far as the up and coming guys that are at. Uh, Coming out of Black House, there's uh, you know we've got the uh, the RFA bantamweight champ, which is Pedro Munoz, mm -hmm. who's a very very, and I, I think he's a promising talent. You know I think he's gonna have uh, I think he's gonna have uh, you know a lot of success when he gets the opportunity to move up to the UFC. There's uh, a kid by the name of Brian Ortega here that um, mm -hmm. that's undefeated. That that's uh, you know he he, he had his first. Uh, fight in the RFA in August here in LA. And, um, you know, he fought, uh, Jordan Rinaldi, who's a very, very tough guy and, uh, submitted him in the third round. So I think he's, uh, he's young, he's only 22 years old. So I think he's got uh, a bright future. Well, let's talk about RFA. Let's talk about some of those cats. It seems like you and legacy with Mick Maynard, uh, down in Houston, right. Are kind of the feeder leagues now for the UFC without anybody actually saying it. Cause it right. seems like, I'll say it. Is it isn't it an official piece now with, between you guys and the UFC that if you got I the mean, great guy to come after? I don't know if it's it? official. I don't think there's anything official. I, I think, uh, but I, I think that the guys that are fighting in, in you know, I mean, in nine shows we've gotten ten guys um, into either the UFC or the Ultimate Fighter. Is there a, a loophole or a, a rider in the contracts when they fight for the RFA that you guys are stuck with us? You're exclusive except for. When Joe Silver or Sean Shelby calls you, yeah, in our contract it says that uh, if Zufa if Zufa offers you a contract, you're free to go. See that? But we're not here. We're not really here to stop anybody. You know what I mean? I, I mean, the, what what we're really going after is is we're a developmental organization for the UFC. So if you if you know, I'm not here to stop anybody. You know, the, we we've let other guys you know go to uh, other organizations too. I'm not here to really want to you know stop anybody but you know our goal and and the people that that want to fight for the rfa i think they have to have uh 
the right the right frame of mind and the, the, their frame of mind is that they want to become an old fight for the UFC. So that's what our goal is. I mean, if you're not if you if that's not your goal, then maybe you're not the right organization for it. Is it is it more of a financial thing? Because I do know you let guys go to other organizations besides the UFC, but you always try to push up the UFC. Is it financially they come in and go, look, I'm getting offered this amount of money to go someplace else and RFA just can't match it? Because you're a very smart businessman. You're not going to pay somebody, one, something no. they're not worth, or two, that's going to break your bank. Well, yeah, the, the, the reality of it is is we have to, we, we have to you know, take each, uh, each, you know, different incident and, and we cross that bridge when it comes. I mean, right now in the contract, what it says is that if Zufus offers you a contract, you're free to go. I'm not going to say that for anybody else every time, but, but right. for the most part, you know, we've let guys go, you know, Jared Downing went to, went to uh, Bellator, uh, you know, so we let him go. Uh, we let uh, Tyson Griffin go to world series of fighting. Yeah. So it's not, it, it's not, um, you know, we're not here to, to stop anybody. We, we want to see guys advance. And, and, you know, a lot of people have said this in the past, but I believe the RFA truly is uh, an organization that's created based off of their success. So, I mean, ideally they move up to the UFC and make a name for this. Sounds great. But if they, if they really want to go and fight somewhere else, we'll cross that bridge when it comes. But our goal is to put guys in the UFC. The UFC keeps, the numbers keep changing, but they always try to keep about whatever, 350 or, or so right. athletes under contract. What's RFA's number and how do you need to get rid of some? Or are you going to look, to, are you looking to pick up more? Well, we're, we're still, we're still building it right now. So right now, that's a good question. I mean, we just had, you know, Sergio Pettis was, which is our champ just went off and uh, signed uh, and went to the UFC, which that to us is a success story that that's goal accomplished. You know what I mean? You know, that, I gotta be honest with you, not, not to interrupt you, Ed, but you took that very well because Sergio is, is a, is a superstar. He's just like right. his brother, Anthony, like that guy, you could have built your whole organization around that one guy. He got that phone call, and you didn't even. I could, I could almost see you at the kitchen table, sitting there when you get the phone call, and going, "Okay, yeah, that's good. What, whatever you need to do, it's fine." And like, didn't even sweat I, I it. Was happy for, well, I'll tell you, um, I was with Dana, and and it was funny because we, uh, I, I was, I was talking to him, and uh, and I told him, I said, I said, "Hey, uh, Sergio Pettis, dude, is 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 a." He goes, "Really?" And I go, "Yeah, I mean, he's our champ right now." And I was just talking to him. I don't even manage him, but. You know, to, to me, I'm excited. I I have this as the same sort of feeling to watch Sergio Pettis go up into the UFC as if I was managing him and and I just got him signed. It's just as exciting for me. I, I want to see his success there because it's just you know, tr you know, the last two guys that have went up to the UFC from the RFA have had extreme success in their debuts. I mean, um, you know, James Krause, his last five fights were in the. Uh, uh, his last five fights before he went to the UFC was was in the RFA, and uh, he goes out there and gets you know uh, not only a submission of the night but fight of the night against Sam Stout, which is an experienced, very tough fighter. Um, and then you know you've got uh, Brandon Thatch who comes up and he, you know he fought he was the main event in our car, card in March, and he, you know he makes his UFC debut and gets the knockout of the night. So I'm really um, you know have high expectations for Sergio, and hopefully he goes up there um, in mid November and and you know puts on a great performance. All right, let's talk about RFA 10 fight that's coming up here next uh, in Des Moines, Iowa of all places. Why? Why Des Moines? Like, why is that? Uh, why is that the hot spot for you right now? Um, I don't necessarily know if it's a hot spot for us, but I think what we want to do is we we want to start creating regions that we go to that we consistently go back to, and we met we. Um, Teamed up with a kid named Ryan Haas, and 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 he's uh, he's a local promoter out there, real good, real good guy, real you know go getter, and um, you know we sat down and and that's what we're kind of doing. We're, we're we're doing a lot of co promotions where we go to these new regions and we we basically. Uh, you know, bring the bigger part of the show, the television, the bigger fights. Yeah. And then we work with the local promoter to do some of the preliminary fights and kind of help us to be on the ground there in that local market. And, you know, our, our goal next year is to do 10 to 12 shows next year. So, you know, we have to kind of move around. So, you know, definitely Los Angeles is, is one of our areas. Uh, um, Denver, Colorado is another area, and, and now we're going to start developing. I mean, for for next year, we've got, you know, so as it looks right now, we're going to be doing, um, you know, L.A. We're going to be doing um, Phoenix. We're going to be doing uh, 
uh, St. Louis and uh, we're possibly getting, you know, we're going to stay in Colorado. So, so we're going to be moving around. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to it and we're trying to build up little, little regions all around the U S where we can keep coming back to two or three times. We get three or four regions and we're going back there two to three times a year. You know, there's 10 to 12 shows. Yeah, that's great. That's, that's a lot of shows for a regional show to be doing it and bouncing around quite a bit. That's actually a really good format. Let's talk about the next fight coming up, the main event, Rose versus Joban. Uh, it's your welterweight championship belt, right? It's the first. Yeah, it's first our one? first. It's going to be our first uh, welterweight champion. What do you uh, What do you expect out of this fight? I expect uh, I expect a really exciting fight. I mean, uh, you know, Biggie Rhodes is is always comes and bangs and puts on great performances, and uh, Alan Jabon uh, Jabon uh, is is, I mean, super exciting. If you, I don't know if you got to watch his fight against. Um, uh, against Spang uh, in Los Angeles, but I got to tell you that was easily the fight of the night. I mean, that was super exciting. Those guys went up there and left it all in the in the cage. And uh, I mean, I think it's going to be definitely fireworks. I mean, that this is going to be a really good main event. I, I don't. I honestly got to say that both guys are talented, and uh, whoever makes the first mistake and the other guy capitalizes is who's going to win. But I don't think it's going to go five rounds. I think it's going to be a knockout, but I I, I'm, I don't know who who's going to get the knockout. Are you uh, last question for you out of here? Are you structuring yourselves kind of like uh, the U, the UFC from the from the back room and locker room payment kind of standpoint? Fight of the night, submission of the night, knockout of the night, stuff like that. We're not there yet, you know. Right now, you know, I'm very realistic about about where we are. You're not going to get rich fighting in the RFA. That's not that's not that's not where we're at. Uh, what we're really trying to do is is we're really trying to make we're growing, um, and 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 it takes a lot of money to grow, man. We're, we're slowly starting to build these things, and as the organization gets. Uh, uh, more stability, and as we, you know, keep, you know, every every show that uh, every show that goes by, we're getting a little bit better. We're getting a little bit more efficient, and we're lear learning a lot. So I believe that, uh, you know, in these next 12 months, I think, you know, there's there's going to be a lot to, to see how far we've came in the past 12 months. I'm looking forward to how far we're going to get in the, you know, in the upcoming 12 months, and and I believe that. Uh, um, you know, slowly but surely, we are going to be doing things like that. Not so much like the backroom bonuses, but I definitely think that as we start, um, you know, getting more sponsors and getting more people involved with the organization, I think we're going to enable, it's going to enable us to be able to, uh, I'm, you know, do fight of the night bonuses and do knockout of the nights and submission of the nights. I'm looking forward to doing that. I, I don't know when we're going to do it, but I'm hoping that it's going to be sooner uh, than later. Well, that's Ed Suarez, uh, RFA 10 coming up, Roses with Joe Band, Friday, October 25th. You guys can watch it live on Access TV with Michael Chevallo and Pat Miltich making the call. Ed, thanks for coming on here. Good luck with uh, everything you got going on. How you keep your schedule straight, I have no idea. You, Every time I see you, I stop you on everything. You're always someplace else. You're going back to back. It's uh, You got uh, a lot of energy and no sleep coming, I'm sure. Yeah, you know what? Uh... You know, I, I like what I do. It, it is. I, I am really busy, but you know, it's what I do, and I, and I enjoy it. All right, I will talk to you soon, bud.